choose, you can become advanced. You can attain self-realization in this life. And that's what this esoteric school is all about. So, any questions? Uddhava? Yes. In the path of uh, Raga Nuga Bhakti, we, well, I've seen very frequently that when neophyte devotees, when we try to, to develop Raga Nuga Bhakti, we always end up with Rasa Bha. Mm -hmm. So is this just how it works, or, or it means it's, it's wrong? Can you repeat the question? I'm going to repeat the question as soon as I figure out what it is. What is the question again? The question is, is it the normal process, or that's, that's the wrong way of doing it? Ah, well, the question is, Uddhava observes that when neophytes try to develop Raganuga Bhakti, they wind up in a condition called Rasabhas, where they have an incompatible or inharmonious relationship with Krishna. Okay, what is Rasabhas? Rasabhas means some relationship that Krishna doesn't enjoy. It's inharmonious, it's incompatible. Hmm? And this is what material consciousness is. Material consciousness is rasa bhas. Uh, Krishna is the controller and owner of everything. He's the supreme enjoyer. And we're trying to say, no, actually, I own and, I own and control this body. And I'm enjoying these senses. And uh, I'm the owner of whatever possessions I have and so on like that. See, this is rasa bhas. This is material consciousness. See? Why? Because Krishna doesn't enjoy it. Now, when we try artificially to attain the platform of Raga Nuga Bhakti, what are we doing? We're saying the same thing. Huh? I control my mind. I control my emotions. Huh? I, I can attain the transcendental platform if I want to. I'm the controller. I'm the enjoyer. Huh? I'm the big guy in the room. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. If we attain the platform of Raga Nuga Bhakti, we attain it because Krishna allows us to. Because Krishna blesses us. Because our, our, our guru gives us the blessing. Huh? We satisfy our guru, which means we satisfy Krishna. And then Krishna gives us the advancement to come onto the point of Raganuga. Raganuga means spontaneous. So it's not something you can do. What you can do is you can do the methods that lead to Raganuga Bhakti. And what are they? Vaidhi Bhakti. Regulated devotional service. Okay. So if you're not on the platform of Raganuga Bhakti, which most people are not, most devotees are not, what do you do? Continue to perform the process of regulated devotional service until Raga Nuga Bhakti spontaneously arises in the heart. Okay? What else can you do? So there's no such thing as Raga Nuga Bhakti with Rasa Bhas while developing hearts. No, no. They're mutually exclusive. As soon as there's Rasa Bhas, that means material consciousness, and that can't be Raga Nuga Bhakti. It could be imitation, Raganuga Bhakti. See, but that won't last very long, yeah. A person will fall down very quickly because they're making an offense. See. So if somebody claims artificially to be situated on the platform of Raganuga Bhakti, the next thing you know they're going to be sneaking out to McDonald's, you know. <laughs> or some nonsense like that. Uh, we see by experience many times someone who claims to be advanced, but they're not advanced because they're dishonest. They're creating an offense. And the result of offenses is you fall down. So if someone falls down, then we know they've created an offense. You see, it's all, it's all part of one thing. You can't separate it out. You can't try to attain Raga Nuga Bhakti. No, you can perform the process of sadhana bhakti, 
which begins from Vaidhi Bhakti, and then by performing Vaidhi Bhakti for as long as necessary, you get the desire for spontaneous love. And from that desire, the spontaneous love of Krishna grows. You see? You're, you're doing the rules and regulations day after day after day. Same routine, the same, same stuff. Right? And from this, you start saying deep down in your heart somewhere, man, I wish I really loved Krishna. You know? It would be easier if I really loved Krishna. I wouldn't have to force myself to do all this stuff. <laughs> so from this desire, this friction, see, it comes from friction. You have to get up in the morning. You don't want to get up in the morning. You have to take your bath. You don't want to take your bath. You have to chant your rounds. You don't want to take it. You don't want to chant your rounds. There are so many austerities. huh? I want to have my cornflakes in the morning. I don't want to have to wait. <laughs> See, these are all austerities. But then we get to the point where after a while we start to like it. Oh, wait a minute, this is nice. Huh? That's a good sign. That's a good sign that we like getting up early in the morning. We like chanting our rounds. We like fasting until noon. Huh? We like eating once a day. We like being celibate. We like being in a very quiet, a place away from all the material nonsense. Uh, we like associating with devotees. We like doing things the devotee way. Uh, we like doing things Krishna's way. That is a good sign. But when, when things really start to get interesting is when you see a picture of Krishna or even just a peacock feather or something like that and you go, oh, Krishna. You know, there's this feeling in your heart like, oh. This is impossible to describe. But what it is is the beginning of bhava. Yeah? The beginning of real spontaneous emotion in the heart. If you have that, it means you desired it at some point. The, the difficult part is to desire that spontaneous love for Krishna. People may desire external things like to be a big devotee huh? or a famous devotee or a leader, or a guru. Uh, these are all external designations. Uh, wanting to become a guru does not make you become a guru. The result of that desire is not becoming a guru. The result of that desire is becoming a phony guru. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you don't become a guru by wanting to become a guru. You become a guru by wanting to love Krishna. And when you love Krishna, then you're qualified to be a guru. There, it's interesting. I was just reading an article this morning that was examining this question. There are two qualifications for becoming a guru. One, you have to be self-realized. And two, you have to be ordered by your spiritual master to become. So really bona fide guru has both of these qualifications. There, we talked this over some time ago, there are many self-realized souls who don't want to become guru, who don't care for the responsibility and the pressure and difficulty. Um, I'm one of them, actually. <laughs> <laughs> but my spiritual master ordered me, so I have to do it. And nobody else is doing it. Well, they're doing, it. they're doing the phony guru trip, but they're not doing the real guru trip. So we have to be on the spontaneous platform, really. And there's no way you can fake that, and there's no way you can do it by your will. That is faking it. Uh, so it's a, it's a little bit indirect. The real thing is that we should desire to love Krishna. Then all these other things come. Any more questions? Yeah. Uh, one of the causes was uh, serious physical attack. And I was wondering if uh, the case of Haridas Thakur, where he kind mm. of went into a state which seemed like death. Interesting. Is the same? Yeah, that would be Mriti Baba. Yeah. Haridas Thakur, in case you didn't know, 
he is a, was born in a Muslim family. And the Muslim Sharia law at that time was very strict. So when uh, Haridas was always attracted to the holy name of Krishna, and he actually became the, the Harinam Acharya, name given by uh, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, because he was chanting 300,000 names of Krishna every day, which actually takes almost 24 hours to do. So he was hardly sleeping, he was hardly eating, he was just chanting, chanting, chanting. It was very nice. Um, anyway, he was caught by the Muslim uh, rulers and sentenced to be, to be beaten in 27 marketplaces. So after 27 market, they, they beat with, they, they used to use a, a bamboo uh, rod 